Hello and welcome to this video on why you should not carbonate your beer with table sugar. Table sugar is a molecule called sucrose. Depending on how refined it is, it could be white, brown or raw. Sucrose is not fermentable in and of itself, but can be broken into two fermentable sugars, glucose and fructose. This is useful if you are going to use it in brewing, except it's not. Sucrose is not a desirable sugar to use for any beer brewing. It is not an important consideration what sugar you choose when making moonshine, ethanol, or even cider in this case, but it does matter when brewing beer. Let's start with a bit of chemistry that will be important later. Sucrose is a simple sugar according to dietitians, but in the terms yeast would be familiar with, it is very complex. This is helped by the size and structure of sucrose. It is large for the yeast cell to metabolize. It is also made from two molecules held together by an oxygen. These two molecules are fructose and glucose. As is the case with most large sugars, they are made from smaller sugars that build up. The bond between these two is not great, which means that either in solution via hydrolysis or via enzymatic action, they can be broken apart. This gives you your sugars, glucose and fructose. Of the two, glucose is far more fermentable by yeast, and as such is given priority. This leaves behind fructose. Fructose has a very high relative sweetness in comparison to both glucose and sucrose. It is more than twice as sweet as glucose, and nearly twice that of sucrose. Fructose can be anaerobically fermented. Either of these reactions will produce CO2 and ethanol. The process leads to a remaining or residual amount of fructose. Fructose gets placed into the metabolic pathway for sugar. The final stage of this is limited by yeast. This limitation is a means for yeast to control how much sugar it needs and how it stores the future energy reserves. One of the storage mechanisms and the metabolic pathway products is called acetaldehyde. It is the intermediary step between pyruvate and ethanol. As bottling your beer limits how far you can carbonate it, the yeast stockpiles the acetaldehyde for when it has access to oxygen or a more accommodating environment without the pressure. This process lets you use sucrose as a source of carbohydrates to carbonate your beer, but glucose and fructose will ferment to an extent. They both make carbon dioxide and ethanol, however fructose makes less ethanol. Unlike using just glucose, sucrose has a mixed result. It will lead to the metabolism of the glucose, but leave the fructose until later. The probability is good that if you add enough sucrose to your bottle of beer to carbonate it, if you are using a standard measure, you are probably going to add enough sucrose to exceed the amount that can be converted during bottle fermentation. This will leave the fructose only partially metabolized. It is where the problems begin. Remember that fructose is decidedly sweet. Not just sweet, but as a result of how it is metabolized, it tastes rather fruity, almost like a cider. This comes from the presence, or partial metabolism, of acetaldehyde. The taste is similar to green apples, or perhaps a pumpkin. This can also be caused by the carbonation being warmed 
above the right temperature range for your yeast. Conversely, esters could be produced by the yeast. And this is a problem when you ferment at a higher temperature than is desirable for your yeast strain. These three problems are easily solved for the most part. Using less sugar when carbonating is a good place to start and is the point of this video. The other two are a matter of monitoring your yeast and the temperature it ferments at during bottle carbonation. Taken with moderation, the amount of sucrose used should be completely consumed before the upper threshold for the yeast is reached. This will minimize the fruity flavors imparted by sucrose. You can generally substitute about 90% of the value of sucrose for a more standard sugar, common examples being both corn sugar and glucose. This is why sucrose is a useful tool, but it would be preferable to use more reliable and fermentable sugars that do not require a calculation to adjust for this difference in performance and undesirable products. If you are going to use table sugar or sucrose in cider, there isn't going to be the same problem. The overall flavor of cider is liable to cover the eventual production of acetaldehydes. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.